We spent the last two years on this channel converting this empty cargo van into our dream off-grid camper van. And here are the 2,000 plus hours that we've spent on it condensed down into 10 minutes. Now, before we touched any tools, we planned out where all of the cabinets in the van would go and where we wanted electrical outlets, lights, and other stuff like that. Now it was time to start building. We used lizard skin spray on sound deadening to make the van whisper quiet as we drove down the road. Then over the top of that, we sprayed ceramic insulation that would slow the heat from a sunny day from radiating into the van. We also tested this with a thermal camera, which worked pretty well. Next, we installed our shore power inlet, which we pre-wired for later and then mounted to the side of the van. This would let us recharge our future electrical system from a plug-in at a campground or a standard outlet at a friend's house. And unlike our previous van, we wanted windows in this one, so we cut three big holes in the sides and secured our Arctic Turn windows in place. They tilt up so they can still be opened when it rains and have blackout blinds and bug screens built in. After that, it was time to run the wires for all of our 12 volt outlets and devices that ran around the van. We wired USB outlets where the bed would be, tuck lights in the ceiling, dimmer knobs for the lights, a three-way switch, and all of the wiring for our 120 volt outlets that would be mounted after the walls go up. We even wired some relays to control some Lightforce Rock 9 lights that we mounted outside of the van. Next, we installed our nomadic air conditioner for those super hot days. We installed this as far back as we could, nearly even with the back of the van, and you'll see why in just a second. In front of the air conditioner, we made another hole and installed our max air fan for ventilation. One of the most fun parts of this build was our roof rack, which we worked with Unaka Gear Co. to design. It's made from lightweight aluminum and CNC cut side panels with a sleek wind fairing on the front, making this setup super low profile. We designed this roof rack to maximize the number of solar panels that we could use, which totaled 580 watts, split between pairs of 200, 55, and 35 watt rich solar panels. Our last task on the roof was to mount our WeBoost cell signal booster, which was easily mounted to the rails of the roof rack. With the outside of the van finished for now, it was time to move inside. We used Zip System R sheathing to form the base of our floor, which is basically foam permanently laminated to water resistant wood. Next, we filled all the floor gaps with additional foam insulation for rigidity, which ended up being a very tedious process. Then we used a marine grade flooring, cut to size, and then glued it to the floor sheathing. To hold the floor in place and give ourselves somewhere to attach cabinets later on, we installed L-Track, which we bolted through the bottom of the van. With the floor finished, we started insulating the walls and ceiling. For this, we used 3M Thinsulate insulation cut to size and fastened to the van with spray adhesive. And after that was the walls. We installed furring strips to give our walls something to attach to. Then we installed L-Track throughout the van, giving us plenty of attachment points for cabinets later on. Then we cut, sanded, finished, and attached all of our birch wall panels with black screws for a modern industrial look. With the walls up, we could install the swivel seats to turn them around for an extended living room. Next was the heart of our electrical system. We built an enclosure from 8020 aluminum extrusion, fastened and wired our Battleborn batteries, wired and programmed all of the Victron components, and then connected all of the previously installed electrical components. And just like that, we had power. The other side of the van would hold our plumbing, which we made another 80-20 enclosure for. We secured the Titan van's water tank and installed all of the plumbing, including the pump, hot water heater, and a small outdoor shower. We wired a water level sensor to our Victron touchscreen to monitor our freshwater levels and another to monitor our gray water levels. We even wired some RubyTag temp sensors. We didn't wire those, those are wireless. We even installed some RubyTag temperature sensors that would send an alarm for if our water tanks were in danger of freezing. Next, it was time for cabinets. 
We designed all of our cabinets in SketchUp and exported cut lists so that we could minimize waste. We used a combination of quarter inch and half inch birch for all of our cabinets, sanded and finished with paste wax, and assembled with pocket holes. We installed indirect LED lighting on all of the cabinets to give the van a modern look. Our upper cabinets are super lightweight with removable storage cubes, so they are easy to load and unload. Our lower storage cabinet features peak design camera cubes and a USB charging hub for camera gear. And we have a toilet cabinet with a compo closet composting toilet. And our kitchen cabinet has an induction cooktop, a huge sink, 12 volt refrigerator, and plenty of room for utensils. We built our bed from Unistrut that we cut to length painted black, fabricated some brackets for, and attached to the L-Track on the walls of the van and assembled inside of the van. We installed bed slats and then rolled out our full-size Tachta mattress to expand fully. Next, we installed bug nets with insulated coverings from the bug wall, which are primarily for keeping bugs out, but they also have a secondary flap for keeping cold air and rain out when the doors are open. After that, we installed bike mounts in the garage with some steel bars that we spray painted black and mounted Unaka through axle bike mounts too. We attached these to the L-Track on the floor, making loading and unloading our bikes super easy and very low profile. Back outside, we installed a Van Compass lift kit with beefy leaf packs, adjustable rake shocks, and stiffer springs up front which gave us about two inches of lift plus noticeable driving improvements and extra room to mount bigger tires for more ground clearance and much better looks. Next, we desperately needed some lighting improvements up front, so we installed a flatline nudge bar and added a ton of extra lights that we could control from the touchscreen on the dash. And just like that, our van was done. It was nearly impossible to condense this complete build into less than 10 minutes, but we documented this whole build in full detail, which I know you're going to find helpful if you're looking for inspiration for your own van build project. So click here and it'll take you to the full length build. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.